our markets. Michael, Don, and Peter, how you doing today? I'm doing great, guys. How are you? Doing well. Now, Yankees-Red Sox, tonight's the rubber game. You obviously did not come up through the Yankee system where they, they teach that, you know, the Red Sox are, you know, the team that we want to beat. So you joined in the middle. Was it a special series for you, although you joined the Yankees later in your career? It was, I think, because of the success that the Red Sox had had in the, the mid-2000s. You know, when I joined in 2009, the Yankees had been down, you know, in, in Yankees terms, had been down for a few years. So the Red Sox went in the World Series in 2004 and 2007. I think it was pretty special for me because I got thrown into a rivalry where the Red Sox had had the upper hand for a few years, and uh, it was exciting to be a part of. How surprised are you, Mark, that CeCe Sabathia has been this dominant over the last five starts or so? You know what? I, I'm a little surprised just just because of, um, you know, the injury history that he's had and, and the last couple of years being up and down. But if, if he's healthy and he's telling us he's healthy, I'm not surprised. You know, CeCe's one of these guys that whether he's throwing 95 or 85, the guy knows how to pitch. Uh, you don't have a long career like he's had. Uh, you know, winning games in, in different leagues, you know, winning playoff games. You don't, you don't do that unless you really know how to pitch. And just because his velocity is down a little bit doesn't mean that CC still can't get out, and he's showing that. Uh, I always hear about CC Mark, and, and, you know, we're not in that room. Well, he's a great teammate. Everybody likes him. So let me ask you, what makes a great teammate, and specifically in CC's case, why does everybody like him? Well, there's a, there's a lot of things that, that guys can do to be a great teammate. Um, and, you know, CeCe's one of those guys that everybody feels comfortable going to. You know, there's a, there's a lot of veteran players that have been around 15-plus years that, you know, younger players are scared to go to them with questions or advice or, or what, what have you. CeCe's not one of those guys. CeCe is actually the opposite. Like, he'll co go up to the young guys and start talking to them about things. And he's one of those guys that's always hosting charity events. He's always hosting, you know, people over his house or, or you know, whether there's a fight or some sort of, uh, you know, big sporting event on the road. He'll, he'll rent out a, a sports bar or something or rent out a suite at, at an arena and have guys over. So he's just a, a, a very lovable guy, and, and people enjoy being around CeCe. That's the, you know, the, the best way I can describe it. He's this great competitor, this, this all-star, and, and at the same time, people just love being around him. Were you invited to, the, um, to his charity event? I was, but I had my charity event that night. Oh, wow, that's amazing! You guys, see, neither of you guys invited either any of us to yeah. either. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. Oh uh, man! Yeah. So, we, so we had the, we had our dream event, uh, formerly Harlem RBI. That was on Monday as well. And so, um, yeah, I mean, there's always great things to be doing in the community, and CC is one of the best. You know, I, I thought about the charity event because there were five Red Sox that went to CC's event. And we're trying to get the rivalry back between the Red Sox and the Yankees like it was in the old days. And I'm reading this book about the Pine Tar game. Uh, Flip uh, Bondi wrote from the New York uh, Daily News about how Willie Randolph hated fraternizing with the other team. There was a moment where, I don't know if you remember this story, Michael, where, where David Wright got tangled with a shortstop at second base. Right. And asked the, the shortstop if he was okay. And David Wright came back to the dugout and Willie said, you're going to kiss him too? Like, Willie was old school, and I'm just wondering if that even exists anymore, because with free agency, I, I just wonder when we talk about the Yankee-Red Sox rivalry, could it ever be the way it was 30 years ago? Could it ever be the way it was 10 years ago because of that? Yeah, you know what? Uh, you bring up a great point. Guys are much more jovial on the field. They are much more uh, accepting of, you know, uh, fraternizing with, with the enemy. And, you know, I was kind of in between. You know, I was, I was polite on the field, and I, I laughed a little bit here and there. But I wasn't going to bear hug guys out there before the game and, and, you know, be one of those guys that was joking around all game. I mean, I, I have a job to do. So I, I'm kind of in the middle there. I, I don't want guys, you know, uh, out there you know, laughing it up with the other team during the game. But at the same time, listen, there's a lot of trades. There's a lot of free agency. You, know, you come up with these guys in different you know, all-star games in, in the minor leagues or in the Arizona Fall League, what have you. So I, I think it's just a different game today. But I do think the rivalry can get back to where it was. The fact of the matter is the Yankees and Red Sox haven't been good at the same time for years. You know, uh, it might have been 2009 when the, was the last time we were both in the playoffs together. So 
um, and we haven't faced each other in the playoffs since when? Uh, 2004, since the, the famous right, right. 2004 mm-hmm. series. So you're talking about, you know, 13 years between, um, you know, facing facing the Red Sox and Yankees in the playoffs. So I think if, if, if for some reason the, the Yankees and Red Sox can, get, can face each other in the playoffs again, the rivalry's back, and, and it's still pretty good right now. I've got to ask you this, and we've always wondered this, and I don't advocate for, you know, because we've, we've talked about the Strickland thing. I don't advocate throwing at people. But David Ortiz killed you guys for years, and no Yankee pitcher ever went up and in on him. Not to throw at his head, but just to make him uncomfortable. And, you know, we talk about fraternizing. Everybody loves David Ortiz. Did you ever wonder, as a Yankee, why aren't we going at this guy? You know, I didn't wonder it until... Uh, the media started making a big deal about it because I don't I don't pay attention to those things during you know during the game or during the season. Yeah, you know, I have no idea how many times David Ortiz has gotten hit by the Yankees. That's that's not something that runs through my mind. But when the media started making a big deal out of it, I said, Yeah, why? I mean, why hasn't he gotten brushed back? I mean, the, I've gotten hit by the Red Sox dozens of times in between that you know those, those periods. I guess it I guess it shows how much the Red Sox liked me. You know, <laughs> so so. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to hit guys on purpose, but at the same time, if, if, a, if a, a great hitter is really comfortable in the box, you might want to you know, buzz them inside a little bit. But, um, you know, I, I think that's one of those things that once it got put out in the media, somebody did hit him right away, right? I think that was – it happened uh, as, as soon as someone got – someone kind of got told that we need to hit him. We hit. I think with a breaking ball. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> You know, we've been trying to discuss, with you even, the, the struggles with Tanaka. And just tell you, Kate, take us through as a batter. You knew what Tanaka was when he first came up. You know how filthy his slider was and the break. With the information that you have now, how would your approach change going against the Tanaka of 2017 as opposed to the Tanaka that first broke on the scene? Yeah, I, w- I, would, I would just sit, sit, sit soft. And the reason I can sit soft and make it be up in the zone is because his fastball doesn't scare me right now. And no matter how good someone's breaking balls are, splitter, curveball, slider, or whatever it might be, you have to be able to keep guys honest with a good fastball. And I, I just don't see his fastball location. I don't see his fastball life. I think I read something where there was maybe no swing and misses on his fastball last start. Um, I think there were three swing and misses at all in the whole game. In the entire the whole five game, minutes. that's just that's tough, right? So um, you, you look at some some really good pitchers out there that only throw fastballs. I mean, there's closers out there. I mean, like Mariano Rivera played an entire career throwing a cut fastball, well located, and and still the best two pitches in baseball are a located fastball away and a located fastball in. And we have gone away from that, I think, as, as young pitchers in our game because you see the swing and misses and, uh, because of sliders in the dirt or, or splitters in the dirt. But the fact of the matter is the reason that you're getting those swings and misses on those pitches is because hitters have to fear your fastball. And I just don't think guys do that right now with Tanaka. Here's one of the text questions we, we got, Mark. It's uh, Grady from Brooklyn, and he uh, texts us, Today is National Best Friends Day. Which teammate were you closest to? Wow, that's a good question. I think the, the closest teammate I've ever had probably was was early in my career, David DeLucci. He was he was one of those guys who, you know, played for the Yankees for a little bit, but um, kind of a journeyman type guy. Uh, was a grinder. You know, you know, no tools that just jumped off the page. But I really respected the way he played the game. And, you know, the two years that we spent together in Texas, we probably, every off day, was before I had kids, um, every off day we would spend barbecue and fishing, um, shooting our bow in the backyard. You know, we're in Texas, so we're doing all the outdoor stuff. Uh, and I was actually with him. When I got traded from the, the Rangers to the Braves, I was with DeLucci uh, fishing on an off day in Cleveland when he was playing with the Indians. So, uh, so he was probably, probably my closest friend of, of my playing time. Now, I don't know if you want to even get into this, Mark, but I've heard, I, I just knew David in passing when he was here with the Yankees. He seemed like a nice enough guy, but I've been told that David DeLucci, when he was single, would date the most beautiful women in the world. True or not? Tens. Every single, and his wife is a ten, too. And, and, I, and that's a huge compliment. And Rachel and David, if you guys are listening, I love you guys. But he, 
His, his wife's a Barker beauty from the Smoke show. Right. Oh, really? Yes, she's beautiful. And I was I was in his wedding, and you know, you look at it was like um, it was like a Hollywood set at his wedding because there were just Barker beauties everywhere, and it was uh, it was it was <laughs> wow. quite an event. I'll tell you that, Michael. You should have been there. Yeah, another thing I wasn't invited to. That's a shame, really. <laughs> All right, so um, 5.38 today, uh, or this week, uh, posted a, a story pertaining to The Shift, which you're very familiar with, and they say that it actually ruined Ryan Howard's career. Do you buy that? Because I think it, it just watching you in eight years, I think it took 30 to 40 points a year off of you. You think it could ruin a career if you do not go the other way and you're a power hitter. So it ruined his career after he blew out his Achilles. I mean, let's, let's remember Ryan Howard, like literally up until the point that he blew out his Achilles tendon, which is one of the worst injuries any athlete can have. You know, you, you, ask, you ask athletes across the board, what's the, and, and doctors across the board, what's the hardest injury to come back from as, as an athlete, and they'll tell you an Achilles tendon. So, so after the Achilles tendon, and he wasn't as strong, wasn't as fast, wasn't as um, athletic, yeah, the shift definitely hurt Ryan Howard. But, you know, there's, there's a ton of players that the shift has hurt, including myself. Brian McCann, um, it's hurt. There's a, there's a lot of guys where the shift has hurt. Didn't ruin our career. You know, I think if Ryan Howard was still healthy for the last few years of his career, still taking his walks, still hitting 40 homers a year, the shift wouldn't, have hurt, wouldn't hurt him as much. Um, I mean, I, I made a big point when I told everybody, I said, listen, guys, I, I tried to be a slap hitter. As you understand, when you're a switch hitter, I'm only facing right-handed hitters or right-handed pitchers. As a right-handed pitcher, they're trying to bust me in. They're, they're throwing across the plate, trying to bust me in, you know, slapping a ball the other way when you're trying to get busted in. It's not, not the easiest thing to do in the world. So for me, what I did in, in my big bounce back season in 2015, I said, I'm just going to really focus on walking more and driving the ball more because I'm going to hit more doubles and more home runs. I had one of the best years of my career at 35. So the shift will hurt you if you're not – the player that you were, absolutely. I think Ryan Howard, in his case, his blowing out Achilles helped, hurt him a lot worse than the shift did. Do you believe, uh, you know, Brian Cashman has come out and said that this team is righty heavy, and he said that one of the reasons he always wanted to load up on lefty power here, he said, but with the shift, it neutralizes a lot of what a lefty power hitter can do. I mean, they, they, have to, they hit into a lot of outs because of that. Do you see his point? I, I definitely see his point, but if you have a, a legitimate left-handed power threat and you turn him down because of the shift, like Yankee Stadium is built for a left-handed power hitter. You know, bring right. him in. <laughs> like if Greg Bird is healthy, he's going to hit 30 home runs at Yankee Stadium. He, that, like, that's the kind of player that he can be. Do, do you like not put him in the lineup because he might get a few hits taken away from the shift? I don't think, you know, I think we, we probably put a little bit too much on it. Now, if your entire lineup is left-handed power hitters, uh, it's a bad team anyway. But don't, don't turn a guy down um, playing for the Yankees with huge home run potential and, and a high on-base potential just because he might hit, hit into the shift a few times.